Hi guys, Nathan here from Headbangers. Today we've got a very special episode. Today we've got Chad from Frozen Soul. Now, if you haven't heard of Frozen Soul before, then you've been living under a rock because they're one of the best death metal bands going at the moment. Um, we talk a lot about on how they've sort of seen the publicity, the new album, as well as just like him coming into his own as a vocalist within the last like a few years or so and really, really put honing in on, on what he wants to go for in his style, which was really interesting to talk about. Me and Brad have been massive fans of Frozen Soul um, for quite a while now. So yeah, it's been great. Have, it was great having him on. Um, now, don't forget, if you like the podcast, don't forget to like and subscribe the video for more updates and for more uploads. We also have all the social media that you could want uh, everywhere. It's Headbangers Podcast, except for Twitter, where it's Headbangers Pod 1. Now, also, don't forget to like, leave a rating if you listen to stream, us on streaming services, because it really does help us out. Now, without any further ado, here's the episode. Welcome back to the Headbangers Podcast, where you host Nathan and Brad. Here today we're joined by Chad from Frozen Soul. How are you doing, man, to start off with? Yeah, good, man. Doing good. Glad to be here. Oh, yeah? Um, so I just want to start off with like a last break question. Um, what's your funniest tour story that you can recall? My funny, my funniest horror story? Uh, tour story, but it might be a horror story. Oh, tour. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, tour story. Oh, fuck, man. Um, Honestly, like, I don't know, funniest tour story uh is as uh, man god damn dude this, uh, that's uh, you got you got to narrow it down for me a little bit like what what kind of topic are we looking for because <laughs> i've done a lot there's a lot of stories man but uh um funniest man like off the top of my head i i don't know man just like getting fucking absolutely hammered in denver um this past uh this past tour um it was uh it was just absolutely crazy uh i don't know i don't have like a specific story in my head right now <laughs> man i don't know <laughs> we uh it was my birthday and uh and i just like we got this um we have a buddy that works for uh this company called monaco and uh he had like 16 pallets of this this drink Monaco delivered to us and uh, it was my birthday and my brother was there. And so just decided to go ham and I was like, I'm going to drink a couple and a couple turned into like 15. And these are like two shots per can. So they're like uh, cocktails in a can uh, insane lethal. And uh, yeah. And we all just got fucking annihilated. And uh, so did all, most all the other bands on the tour too. So uh, we ended up going to an arcade and like could barely walk across the street afterwards. Like it was just insane. Um, but I don't know. I don't really have, I can't think of any like super funny stories, man. <laughs> um, lots of badass ones and stuff like meeting idols and playing in front of huge crowds and stuff that we never thought we'd get to do. But uh, you know, it's usually like pretty, pretty chill there's like some horror stories you know dealing with stuff that uh you know happen that you know flat tires and, you know uh getting so sick you got to cancel a show or something like that but uh yeah other than that i don't know <laughs> how do you like because this is something that i've always wanted to like, ask bands is like how do you like cope with the hangover knowing that like you've got like a show the next day because when i get a hangover i need to just lay on my sofa and just like not move <laughs> like i just i'm absolutely comatose what's your cure yeah i mean i my cure starts before the hangover happens <laughs> i <laughs> really ahead. try dude i try hard not to get hangovers man because i really feel it when i when i have it i mean like i'm not i'm not a 20 year old anymore you know so it's like i i just can't I can't do it. I don't, I'm, I, and I'm this, I'm, I'm kind of a square when it comes to, to drinking and stuff. Like I, uh, I don't drink before I play. Um, I don't, I don't like, I don't do anything like that before I have to get on stage because like, it's already hard enough for a big guy like me, you know, like I'm not the most fit guy on the planet by the furthest definition from that as possible. And so like, I can't, you know, I can't risk like, getting hung over and stuff before I play or else like I can't perform 
and then like i just like ruin it for everybody that's there to see us and stuff so um but as far as like my actual cure for a hangover it's literally just like get as fucking absolutely blasted as you want and then just drink a fuckload of water right before you go to sleep like Small. i'm talking like literally like nine bottles of water before you go to bed you'll like wake up and have to pee like you've never peed your entire life before but like you won't have a hangover you'll feel like way more rejuvenated or nowadays just liquid iv i don't know have you guys had liquid iv before no it's, no, it's quite I hard haven't. to get into the in the uk to be fair dude it's um, crazy it's like crazy it, it it is like the ultimate way to like fix hydration issues and it's no joke like i've always hated gatorades and stuff like that never mess with that stuff but like dude liquid iv it saved all of us on tour um because we'll just be super exhausted going 100 miles an hour um and then hit a liquid iv and you're good um even back in uh 2022 we're on tour dying fetus i got like this crazy stomach bug when we were in vancouver and um like it was the worst day of my life. Like that is a fucking tour horror story right there. <laughs> <clears throat> that is the worst. It's the worst day of my entire life. I, I actually thought to myself before I stepped on stage that this was the day I was going to die. I literally thought that. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck this. Fuck it. Like if this is how I'm going out, this is the way I should go out. And I was, I mean, I was dead fucking serious in my head because I was so dehydrated. I could barely see. Um, it was like, I've never been that dehydrated. We're living in Texas, working outside, you know, 12 hours in the heat, sweating all day with little water. You know, like I've, I've had extreme heat exhaustion before to where my whole body was cramping and stuff. Um, but this was like next fucking level. Um, because, um, I got sick. John got sick from dying fetus. Uh, Alex had gotten sick. I think it actually started with Alex, uh, from undeath and, uh, and like, it just like passed around this crazy stomach bug. And, uh, I'll never forget like two hours before we played, I was like fucking throwing up like crazy. And, uh, I mean, I'm talking like <laughs> violently throwing up. Like everyone was like, yo, do we need to cancel today? Do you need to go to the hospital? Because, I mean, I'm in the back of the van, right, on East Hastings Street, the worst street in the entire world, uh, by the way. Um, and people are just, like, banging heroin right next to our van and stuff. And then, like, um, I'm just fucking, like, projectile vomiting all over the place. It's all over me. It's all over the van. It's all over the ground. Like, it's insane. And then... Um, then I like I got like crazy fucking diarrhea. Like, dude, it's like it's disgusting, oh, dude. Man. It was terrible. I was so dehydrated by the time we got on stage that like I couldn't see anything. We played our set. I like took my shirt off on stage because I was like just dying, man. Um, and then afterwards, I don't even really remember everything that happened. I just know that I went side stage and I literally had to lay down on a couch with my like all pretty much all my clothes off and just like i was just shaking like i just remember shaking and trying to drink water and like just being like at that point in my head where i was like okay should i call should we call an ambulance right now am i does this make me look really stupid like do i am i weak like am i like is this this is super embarrassing should we, should I do this? And then people are stopping by all of Chelsea grin, all of, you know, dying fetus, like the rest of the band, like, you know, they're all like, just, just give us the word. Like you need an ambulance. Like, cause I mean, I was like fucking gone. I was, it was bad. And then the next day we had to cancel Seattle. Um, and I just banged a liquid IV all day, all, all day. And then was good as new a day later. Like, like nothing had ever happened. Because it's like some of these, <laughs> yeah, dude. Seriously, like it's amazing. Like this stuff is like st this stuff is like um, is like is like amazing. So it works for like being super sick. I, and it's 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 funny because I know that whole that's a whole giant story that kind of ties in fucking tour story and care for hangover in one. But like liquid IV, oh, it's a tall need, horror like, story though, for real. <laughs> yeah, you need to fucking smuggle it over there. All right, because I need to. That's that's like the best thing in the world for me, at least. Like it, it like and all. I mean, it's a, it's amazing. So that's my ultimate cure. But yeah, drinking a ton of fucking water if you don't have that, you know, you bang, you just 
get some fucking Taco Bell or something and just like and drink a bunch of water and you're never going to have a hangover. Like, you know, I've just had those one few moments in my life where like I drank way too much and just lost control and didn't care. And then I regretted it the entire next day where my stomach, my stomach's so sour that it's like, if anything touches it, if I swallow my spit and it touches my fucking stomach, I'm going to, I'm going to throw up, you know, yeah. oh, man, I, uh, I don't want to, I'm too old for that shit, man. Too old for that. I've been, I've been there and that, now I look back <laughs> on it, I'm like, I, I yeah. couldn't do that to save my life. Like, yeah. like I always message Brad, like, like being like, was I like bad last night? And he's there, like, I didn't even know. He said, but to me, I'm there, like, I was like, I would definitely, I was definitely really bad. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I'm there, like, I'm like, I was definitely really bad last night. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I've been in those stages so many times. Um, one thing I wanted to sort of ask you is like, when I first mm-hmm. sort of heard about you guys, is when you released uh, Crypt of Ice, mm-hmm. and I feel like. Since those two years of even just releasing that, you've propelled to like a completely different level in sort of size and, and growth. Um, and I just wanted to sort of ask you, like, what was like the feeling and what like of that, and how was it felt as a band for you guys? Um, looking back on it now <clears> as well, and as sort of like, what was your first like inclination that you you know like you were sort of getting some traction when that was happening? Mm, I mean. With the, you know, with this whole, with this band, man, like, um, there's kind of been something there, um, since like the inception of the band. Um, I was in bands and stuff beforehand. I met a bunch of people, um, you know, and, and like really, I mean, we've worked really hard. We've, we've stayed moving and stuff, but like at the end of the day, like this, like the music industry and stuff and just everything, it all starts like locally, you know, it starts with like going to shows and making friends and, you know, just like, just fucking loving it. And so I wasn't ever, I don't think any of us were ever really focused on like, like, you know, popularity or anything like that. So it wasn't actually till recently that I, I don't know, man, that I even really started thinking about that stuff. um, Because like, this is just what I love and you know, the traction was there, but like, we kind of didn't believe it, honestly. I mean, that's the truth. Like we are just so focused on writing and so focused on like, you know, playing shows and touring and stuff that like, you know, we see a little bit of like, Oh, you know, people are asking to see us. People like us. So let's tour. So like, instead of like thinking about like, wow, people like us. Like, that's crazy. We're just like, all right, let's tour, you know? And we just like keep going and it keeps getting better and better each time. And that just makes us want to do better and stuff. But, you know, um, this is something I say to everybody, like in every interview that I, that I do and something like this gets brought up, it's like, <clears throat> it's, it's crazy, man, because like I'm 37 years old, you know, I'm not a little kid. And like, I've been doing this since I was like 17. Mm. So like, I've been trying to like play in bands and loving this and listening and learning, and you know, and, and idolizing a lot of my heroes. And, and it's the same with pretty much everyone else in this band. And, and so it's like, a lot of people are like, man, how do you deal with the, you know, the, you know, the, 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 the extra attention you're getting or something. And it's just like, you know, a lot of the times, man, like I, I don't even think about it, you know, like, because like, that's not something that's ingrained in me to like, think about, you know, what's ingrained in me is to just like, keep fucking moving, you know, because this is all I know how to do. And this is the only thing I've ever put a hundred percent of my being into. And that goes the same with pretty much the rest of the band too. So it's like, You know, it's not until it's in your face that you have to, you know, have to think about it. Um, But, you know, I had some pretty awesome people in my life, you know, when we signed the, the or right before we signed a century media and stuff that like helped give me guidance and talk to me a little bit about like some stuff. And one of them's like Eric from gate creeper. Uh, He's like one of my best friends and he really helped me like, um, see the stuff that was happening and understand it and like let it into me, you know, 
uh, because like I just I'm just kind of like I don't know what to think you know I don't know what to do I'm just gonna write some death metal whatever <clears throat> but he's just like no nah, man like you've worked hard like you deserve it like let it sink in like enjoy the moment you know enjoy it and you know I still have the same conversations you know with him like later on like something crazy will happen and I'll like text him and we'll start talking about it I'll just be like dude this is fucking awesome. And so then I have to sit there and think like, holy fuck, man, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, instead of being always like trying to think about, okay, what to write next, what to do next, what, what, what's the next move? Like, I'm always trying to think of what the next move is like my time's running out, you know? And, uh, you know, sometimes it's hard for me to like sit there and like smell the roses, you know, and like enjoy it and just like let it sink in and really have a thought about it. Um, so it wasn't until recently, like I said, when I like really started delving into it and, and talking and I, I had a, a little freak out moment pretty recently because we've got some like really huge tours coming and like some things that are just like way bigger than I thought anything I'd ever be a part of, you know, and I just and so I'm just sitting there like, yo, is this like, is this real? Like, is this, <laughs> should this actually be happening to us? You know, like just little thoughts like that, you know, um, you know, I, in, in a world of so many amazing bands, you know, um, that do so many crazy things and some that, I, I mean, a lot that I'm just like, wow, they do just so much better than us, you know? And, and I, and I, I don't always try and be like, uh, you know, this band's better than this band or we're better than, I don't really, I'm not, I don't try to think like that. You know, it's, I just try to do what we do. And, uh, but sometimes it sneaks in where you're just like, fuck man, like why us, you know, and, uh, and whatnot. So it's been, it's been crazy. It's been hard to adjust to, but you know, the, luckily we just, we've got so many people on our side, you know, friends and family and stuff that support us. And, you know, as more cool stuff starts happening, like, it's just like, <clears throat> it's becoming more of like, a this is just life. It's just a way of life. So it's like, it's, I'm starting to easily adjust to the new things happening, you know, because I'm like trying to like let it in my heart, you know, instead of just believing that I'm, you know, uh, instead of like letting the imposter syndrome, like take over, you know, um, uh, and just like let it in. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're all adjusting as it comes. It's, it's, it's sometimes hard to believe, but, uh, but we're fucking, we're, we're moving. And some it's really cool shit happening. Say like two Thanks, instant man. classics like and you know you can tell that you guys have put so much effort in like especially like right out of the gate with you know crypts of ice and you know, that whole album is just absolutely a masterpiece and you guys followed it up with also another masterpiece like you can tell that you guys are truly passionate and you know this is whole wave now of like new death metal bands kind of like what happened to thrash like you know when this boy start coming out I mean, i'm not saying that death metal was dead but like it's more alive than ever now thanks to bands like you and death and tribal gears and all these amazing bands um how did you guys like find your signature sound like you said that you've been obviously in this industry you've been working hard for like all these years like how did frozen soul because you've got a very unique sound like nobody sounds like frozen soul um you've got the you know the unique blend of old school death metal and hardcore and all these little nitpicks in there um do you just like play and this is what came out or <laughs> tell me more i mean <laughs> no I, I mean it's fair like i i mean it, it's like <laughs> you know, it's funny you ask that question and I, I really like appreciate questions like that. And the reason why is because like we do have like the select people out there that are just like this band's just a bolt thrower reincarnation, like blah, Definitely blah, not. blah, blah, blah. And don't get me wrong, like <clears throat> bands like bolt thrower, obituary, mortician, those bands are like huge influences on the, on our band. Um, and we would not be doing what we do without them because that's what we like to listen to. And like at the end of the day, like when you're in a band, um, you're not in a band to make money. You're not in a band to get popular. You're not in a band for any of that stuff because usually being in a band doesn't get you those things. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. it's like, it's like you're in a band because y you genuinely want to play music that you love to listen to, you know? 
So it's always read comments and stuff like that. And it never bothers me because a lot of it's positive. You know, a lot of it's like, wow, this is like, <clears throat> holy crap. I never thought I'd get to see Bolt Thrower again. This is a cool band that sounds kind of like Bolt Thrower. It's awesome that I can get to like have that sound again when I thought I lost it. Um, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, like we're just writing, dude, we're just, we're just writing the music that we love and we have a specific way that we like to do it. And, you know, um, it's death metal. Like it's death metal. It's old school style death metal. Like I love old school style death metal. So does Michael. It's like, we're, we're going to write the kind of music that we like, that we like to listen to and that we want to hear. And but like in doing that and playing band, playing in bands for so long, you kind of learn not to tread on other people like too much. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not just going to write a bolt thrower record, you know? I, I mean, like, <clears throat> we're going to write stuff that's in our hearts, but like through the scope of somebody who likes that style of stuff. So it's going to sound, you know, kind of similar in that sense. But with the way me and Michael work, especially, we are very meticulous with like not ripping bands off. We listen to like all the newer wave bands because we're friends with a lot of them and we love their music and we love we love like the style, like we love the resurgence, you know? Um, so like, we'll listen. And if we hear something like, Oh, something we've been writing sounds too much like this out of like the love and consideration for like other people doing their, their, their passion, we, we change it, you know, like we, we change it. And then we spent, do we have 20 different versions of all the songs, 20 different versions of every song on glacial domination, because we'd write a song and be like, is that too much like a bog song? Change it. Oh, I think I hear an undeath riff. Change it. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, I think that's a bolt thrower riff. Change it. Like, before you know it, it's just a completely different part. It doesn't even sound All these like different. new air bands like yourself, though, and, and you know, like undeath and stuff like that. The reason why you guys are so good is because you don't sound like the old school death metal bands. Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of great death metal, but there's a lot of bands that do sound like other bands, which mm -hmm. fair enough if that's what you want to do. But I think that's yeah, the reason fine. why you guys are amazing because you, you don't sound like them. Yeah. Like, we, we, and it's in like, you know, it all, it all boils down to like our love for this stuff, you know, like I can't, I, it, I can't do something that sounds just like something that someone else did because I'm like, why would I want to play that? I could just, I would rather just go listen to them do, you know? So it's like, we try and like still like still show what we love, but like do our own thing at the same time. You know, it's like one of my biggest uh, influences is, you know, is Carl's vocals. Like, but in the beginning, I didn't know how to do any sort of death metal vocals or anything like that. I had never really done vocals before. So, you know, I had to kind of figure it out. And all I had was, is like, well, you know, you know, will it's, you know, tardy, like, those are the styles that I really like mixed with, you know, uh, hardcore like integrity, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like I was like, I got to figure it out. And then, you know, as you start to do it, you just kind of come into where it's just the stuff that you're doing is just natural. You know, like at this point, I don't even think about a style at all when I'm doing vocals. It just, <laughs> dude, whatever comes out is what comes out. Like I don't really try anymore. Oh, like yeah. I don't, I don't try to do this crazy stuff. You know, it's just like, this is me. It's me. You know, it's like I'm in the moment when I'm doing it. So, and that's, you know, that's what I love about old school death metal. That's what I love about heart, old school hardcore and stuff is like a lot of it's like in the moment style stuff, you know? Um, and so, like, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's all of that together is sort of like how we have, um, how we have gotten to like where we are with our sound, you know? And, uh, you know, I appreciate you saying that, like, you know, it sounds like, you know, our own thing because we, we really yeah, real, have, we've really tried to make it our own thing, you know? And, um, you know, I love any opinions that anybody has, like, you know, I, I don't ever hold anything against like people that are like, this band sounds like this or people call us cold thrower and stuff like that. And I think it's funny, uh, because I fucking, I love bolt thrower man. they're like, they're my favorite death metal band, uh, um, forever will be. So, uh, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm you know it's uh it's it's been a road to get like where we are you know both like with the band and our sound 
So it's cool to hear you say, you know, that that's how you feel. We, uh, Oh yeah. That, that I mean, you like it, like the sound and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Me, I, like uh, me and, me and Brad have both been like pretty big fans of you for like a while. Oh yeah. Um, just cause like we, we both love death metal and, um, and everything like, and, and hardcore. Cause I, you, I sort of discovered you guys when I was sort of, sort of transitioning out of like being like, Oh, I only listen to metal. So then like being like, wonder what the hardcore scene's like and then i remember like how you's having like the sort of like groovier riffs and and no sort of sections as well like yeah. really got, made me go oh you can have both do you know what i mean i was like you can't have one yeah. of the you don't have to just have one or the other and, yeah and that's what i think made me like sort of <clears throat> go towards you guys more because it was like what i'm familiar with but also what I, I like currently as well yeah yeah man hardcore is like uh hardcore is like really fucking awesome in its in its in its essence like you know the the freedom of movement and like and just the the vibes that the whole genre gives uh sonically uh is just awesome and you know i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing at all if it wasn't for hardcore man like it's i <laughs> i suggest everybody you know, regardless if you like the moshing styles or what other kind of lame shit people kind of try to bring up, it, the music, there's nothing like it. There's oh, nothing like it. Just like, agree. There's yeah. nothing like it. And, and you know, and if you get into it, if you can get into it and actually move with the music, um, you, you'll see that. You'll oh, see man. it. I mean, yeah, you'll see it. Yeah, I, and, I I brought all my friends to hardcore shows when I started going. Like I started going to more local shows, and I was like, guys, you've got to come. And like Brad and like all my other friends, were like, yeah, but the moshing man, it, it's a bit, it's a bit like, I don't know. And I'm like, honestly, once you go, you get it. Yeah, I was like, was once blonde. once you go, you get it. And then you go, man, I want to go to yeah. more shows like that. Yeah, like I'll never forget like the first time that I moshed, man. Um, like the first time that I moshed, I think it was um it was a mixed bill uh with um a band called Premonitions of War. Uh, they're like sort of like a metal core hardcore. They were in a weird time in hardcore where it was like it wasn't like the metal core nowadays. It was like more metal than core. Um, uh, but they were like hardcore dudes playing like technical metal, you know and stuff um with like breakdowns uh and um and there was a band called misery signals that was on there and six feet under <laughs> the craziest wow. bill. but it was like <laughs> yeah, a weird little local under. yeah it was like a local metal hardcore festival mm-hmm. um and um it was actually right before i met a bunch of my friends my longtime friends and this was like a long time ago um this is like right before i met all of them and i'll never forget like the first time i moshed was just because like i was at the show and like i was already listening to you know metal and and stuff like that and i was just like i got i I was watching and like that band misery signals played and uh, this was like 2004 or something this is a long time ago um and uh i'll never forget like i was like watching and like the kids were in the pit like i was in high school you know um and they were just like throwing their arms back and stuff and i was like man and then like and it happened at a certain part of a song you know what i mean like the heavy part would happen and like but i didn't hear the heavy part i saw the heavy part you know like i saw it happen like it that's what changed me forever like a spiritual work and then you just like because I didn't, I, I felt it when I saw it happen, you know, I'm a very like, you know, see it when I, I, I believe it when I see it kind of guy, you know, for a lot of things. So it's like, like if I was just sitting in there in the back with my arms crossed, you know, and I was watching the band and they played this super heavy part, it probably would have felt heavy, you know, but like I saw the fucking kids getting down at that part and they oh, were, man. they were kids just like me, you know? And it changed my life forever, like forever. And at, from that point on, I loved hardcore because hardcore was the, was the place that had that style of moshing. You know, it was so aggressive, but like not aggressive, but like it was aggressive, but like 
you know, they weren't just like beating each other up. Like they were dodging each other and stuff. You know, they were cognizant of each other. And I'll, I'll never forget, man. I jumped in. I just jumped in, started throwing my arms back and just like, I don't know, man. I just like felt it, you know? Um, and then I just went down the rabbit hole. And so like, that's followed me, man, my whole life. It's, it's followed me, you know, um, I used to be that big dude, man, that would just jump off the fucking stage and stuff. And, you know, was known locally for moshing and hard, and, you know, and just moshing to every band and stuff like, you know, and I carry that with me, man, into, into, into metal because, you know, like when I started writing hardcore and stuff, I realized that like, man, I'm just writing, we're just writing metal is what we're doing. Like, this is just metal. It's, it's, it's the metal style guitars. So it's like metal style riffs, but in, in a hardcore lens, you know, to where it's like, it's still like the songs and you can move with it. And, you know, it's meant to move you, whether you're got, you got to get shit done. You got to go to the gym. You got to, you know, get through the bullshit ass week that you've got coming at you. Like, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it, it's followed me the whole way. And, um, you can hardcore, see it from the music for metal. Sure. Yeah. It's like, it's there. And so, you know, like I, I love, I love a lot of different styles of death metal. Um, I love like, you know, the incantation style stuff and immolation and I love cannibal corpse and, and whatnot. Um, and I love bolt thrower. I love, I love all that kind of stuff, but like groove is like, what's in my heart you know it's what's in all of our hearts and it's what is in a lot of people's hearts in texas you know oh yeah um so like hardcore just like has that has that fucking movement and you can write a just pure ass death metal record and still have that you know still have that that movement and that power and uh that's just like what we try to do you know um so i i don't normally like to say like hardcore death metal you know that it's not about that it's fucking death metal is what it is but it's like but it's but it's just got movement it's there to make you feel something you know not just stand there with your arms crossed and just be like yeah that's heavy (laughs) oh yeah that's heavy heavy no if it was heavy you'd be you'd be doing some crazy shit right now if it was heavy you know and so like yeah you know yeah, sorry, I, I I fucking run off with. Oh, I, I, I'm a no, talk. No, that's good. It's it's good. Okay. I run I run <laughs> off with this shit. Honestly, like that's the same how how I sort of felt when I first went to a hardcore show because it wasn't like I was used to metal shows and like in reality they were quite tame. Do you know I mean you still got like a lot of people like cross arms and you know there'd be a pit, but there were never anything like it was like you felt it sonically, but hardcore just hit differently where you like yeah. the entire atmosphere was different because i think because it's more of a niche than metal i think the people who who were there genuinely want to to be there like crowd bands everyone so when everyone when they see the band that they've wanted to see for ages they'll throw in like extra energy whereas like you know like a lot of times it's like you know in in the metal scene people will will, might have already seen them at a festival might have already seen them before and they're kind of like yeah no they're cool i'll check them out again and like but hardcore's like so niche where it's like you might not be able to get to see that band for a long yeah. while so mm-hmm. make it count while you while you see them and like yeah. seeing that i just remember it just being like i couldn't go back to like how i was before it like changed it sounds like cri- like clichés to say but it did change me as like yeah. a person because once i got into that scene met all like loads of people and people who are now really good friends like it just changed how I thought about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's crazy. I always like, I don't know, some, some experiences you just can't like share through words, you know, uh, unless someone else has experienced it, you know? Um, but yeah, there's just like, there's just an energy, man, that like we have to have dude. And uh, I don't know, man, I think, probably the second we can't have that energy anymore is the second none of us are going to want to do this <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you know like none of us are going to want to do it if we can't give the energy that needs to be there you know uh so you know it all goes back to the that's why i don't get fucking i don't get hung over before i play <laughs> you know oh, yeah, I, I won't even get fucking wasted the night before 
and just like it's happened it's happened like once or twice um but like most of the time i'm super cognizant of it because i need to like if my heart rate's not 250 you know uh, <laughs> yeah my blood if my blood pressure's not through the fucking roof you know while i'm on stage then i'm not doing it right you know um and i can't do i just you know it's obviously an exaggeration but <laughs> you know if uh you know, if, if, uh, if I can't like give it my all, then like I, you know, it's just, it's going to be bad. So, so it's like you guys have, you know, you've worked as well with some like heavyweights in the genre, like you've worked with like Mahifi, John Gallagher. Like, what's been like the craziest and like who's been the most fun for you to work with? Not that you can pick favorites, um, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Matt, um, Matt was a great dude to work with. Uh, he, uh, it's crazy like he kind of like he kind of awakened something in our band that uh that i didn't really i don't know i didn't really think was there like you know um this record was like a bit more pressure uh in a sense because it's a follow-up record so you know with that with the first lp we re-recorded a bunch of songs you know from the demo it was the debut record on century media. So there was a lot of pressure and the world was shutting down when we were recording it. But like at the end of the day, four of the songs on the record were from the demo. So it's like, we had a bunch of the slack, uh, you know, uh, taken off of the, off of, off of that process with this one, we had to write like a whole new record and we had like a ton of stuff going on. Um, you know, we were touring nonstop and you know, all that stuff. So it's like, had a bit more pressure coming from all fronts. And, um, you know, Matt was there to kind of be like, you guys got this. Like, I support you guys. I really dig what you're doing. You can do this. Like, don't be afraid to, you know, try new things. You know, you want to add solos, add solos. You want to add like higher vocal ranges, go for it. You know, um, he was there to just be like, be yourselves and do what you want to do because in order for you to like continue to do this forever you know you need to continue to love it you know and stuff like that so he was just there to like really help like instill that in us um seems like an awesome dude dude fair. he's fucking amazing yeah. he's badass dude he's super sick and and the cool part about it is like he's such like a busy dude you know he does this stuff all the time like um so to, to take time out of his day to work with us, like when he's like a full-time Twitch streamer and a full-time dad and, you know, just a full-time musician touring all over the world, it's crazy, you know, it's awesome. It's crazy cool. Um, and yeah, like we went over there and, uh, to Florida and pre pro out nine songs with them. We worked on a couple songs together. It was awesome, man. Like crazy crazy good dude to work with um you know uh i'd say yeah it's definitely hefe for like the the best one that we've worked with i mean it's it's cool like we've worked you know like uh reese from creeping death and blake from power trip and fugitive came into the studio and threw down some stuff on um a song on the new record called arsenal of war it's a song for my like brother that passed away um so like that was really cool and then those are my friends so i've known them forever so i mean it's always good working with them uh in that kind of sense because i've never really gotten to before um and then uh john gallagher was like a remote thing like he did his thing and sent it in and we put it in the song um but we've toured with him twice now um gonna be three times this summer because i'm pretty we're playing like six days with them in in europe again so um yeah, I mean, it's definitely Heafy though, man. Like he's Heafy's like super fucking cool dude and he he added so much to the record. Uh, and I feel like it really helped make it like special, you know. And in turn like I I mean, he's he's just he's become like one of the best friends we could ever ask for, you know. So he's yeah, also helped to get me on the with podcast, other stuff. To be fair. I'd love to get him yeah. on the podcast. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, but hell yeah. everyone that we spoke to um about like about Matt, like we spoke to Malev when they worked with him. And like the, the the story is just universal of like from from him, like he's like the nicest dude, no really knows his shit, but also just like really 
Like it comes across just in in general where you can tell yeah. this is a guy that's just a fan of the season. Yeah. Like yeah. And he just happened to be in like Trivium. Like that's the vibe you get from it. It's like, oh yeah, I didn't expect Trivium to be a bit like as big as it is, but it is. But now I get to help out the the scene that I love. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, he's a total he's a total like metalhead. Loves but he loves hardcore. He loves he loves everything, man. He loves Oh man. One of the coolest things I like about Heafy is is like he fucks with everything. Yeah. That's really what's does. so cool about it. Like he likes more mainstream stuff, but he also like he follows the guys like trying to do that stuff. And he also follows like the the more underground waves and stuff like that. Like he respects all of those those avenues. You know what I mean? That's really fucking cool, man. Because it's most rare, of the right? time yeah, most most of the time people stick to their lane, you know, and like his he he's a fan of all of the lanes, <laughs> you know, and like for somebody who does as much as he does, he doesn't have to give a shit about any of that. They like Trivium has so many fans and like I had never seen. Well, actually, I take that back. I think I had seen Trivium in like 2008 or something or 2006 or something. It was at this place called Ridgely Metal Fest back in the day. I think I did see them, um, but I could obviously not take it in back then. You know, I was a kid. But uh, but recently when we were on the Napalm Death Tour, um, you know, he invited us because uh, we were playing New York City the same day. He invited us to their show. Dude, let me tell you. I got to witness Trivium's impact on people from the side of the stage, uh, backstage, side stage area. And let me tell you, it was fucking magical. Like, it was magical. Like, I was looking out there and I could see everyone and hear everyone singing the words to his songs. Like, like for a metal band, that's amazing. It's incredible. You know, yeah. That's amazing. Like, that's amazing. And, you know, the only other band that I've been able to see, like, up that close and see that happen was uh, the Black Dolly Emerge mm. on this most recent tour we did. Because there were people that you could hear the crowd singing over the music. Like, they play Funeral Thirst, um, which is, like, one of, off of one of my, like, um, you know, one of my intro records to Death Metal back in the day. Um uh, unhollow and like dude straight up like you can hear these motherfuckers singing the words it was just like that at the trivium show you know so for somebody who who plays uh to get back to matt you know like somebody who plays what he plays to the diehard fans that he plays to with all the other shit that he's got going on and he still finds time to listen to new bands and care about new bit it's it's fucking amazing he must be nocturnal or something i swear the yeah, guy just, I do. He it's crazy <laughs> it's fucking crazy man like the dude like no matter what anybody tells you no matter what anybody tells you you have to love it to do that kind of stuff oh 100%. to like to take the time to do that you have to love it nobody can pay you to love that nobody can you have to love it because you only have so many hours in the day you know and like he really like takes the time, man, to like pay attention to what everybody's doing, and like, oh, yeah. and and like to support, you know, and like it was awesome. It's good, great. It was it was super good to work with him, and you know, super awesome dude. I I genuinely think it's sick as well. Like he doesn't keep it to himself. He if he finds a band great, he'll shout he'll shout them out, put them to a larger audience, take them on Tribune shows with him. He did it to like he's done it to so many bands, and it's like. He did, he, like you said, he doesn't have to do that, but it's like, yeah. you could tell he just, he loves it. So he's there like, yeah, of course yep. I'm going to, it's like, I'm just like, I'm going to share the wealth. I'm not going to keep it all to myself. Yeah. That's what's yeah, that's yeah, the vibe yeah. I get from him. It's, it's great. I wanted to sort of ask you as well in like, in terms of like vocals, because I know from like, sort of like from doing it myself, you, I know I found when I first died, I would like try to copy or emulate someone that I really looked up to and then sort of found my own style from there. Who were those people for you? And do you ever like when you're performing? Do you ever still like, in a way, channel them, in a way like on stage? Um, I mean, I would say that like 
I, I tend to like be a, like a little bit more like in my own zone mm-hmm. nowadays. Like I don't really, you know, I'll go back to what I said before, man. Like, you know, Dwight Hellion, John Tardy, Carl Willits, mm-hmm. you know, Riley Gale from power trip, you know, um, a bunch of my friends, you know, uh, Seth Gilmore from Scourge and Fugitive, like a bunch of those people, like, are always in my head, you know, and they they're always a piece of me because they're what I've grown in music, like loving and like, you know, some of them I know them personally, you know, they're my friends and they've he- always helped influence who I am, you know as a as a musician um but like when i'm like on stage now um and it has been this way for a while i kind of just like i try to just like i try to just bring out this like person inside of me that i wish was there all the time you know um it's like this person that like feels feels right you know that i could just like conquer anything if i want to you know, I, I'm, I, I'm super confident and, you know, and not how I am outside of music, you know? So I think like, I think like, I think a lot less about influence and stuff like that when I'm on stage now and a lot more of just like that inner person in here, you know? And I think everybody should do that eventually. You know what I mean? Like you should just get up there and fucking vibe, you know, do you like, come into your feeling. And then when you go to record, you know, try to set the setting up to do the same thing, you know, to, to bring that person out of you, you know, and, and do what you want. I mean, I hope that answered the question, you know? Oh yeah. You know, a hundred percent did because like, I, I remember I, I had a friend that told me to do like the same, same thing when I was first like sort of learning. It was mm-hmm. like, Oh, it's like, I really want to go for like this style or, sort of like emulate this person in a way when I want to like performing like nah just do you yeah yeah I mean like you you have to yeah because you have to have like an idea in your head but like at the end of the day man like I don't know I got a couple things dude that I do a I loved professional wrestling when I was a kid you know I still love it I'll always love it so people like the undertaker and Stone Cold Steve Austin, those are like some of my biggest influences for my like personality on stage. Um, and then like, you know, and so, and also like, I like, I like working out in the gym. I like the feeling that I get from like being active, you know, I'm not by any means the most fit guy, but I, I try like my hardest, you know what I mean? To like, to, to, it keeps me like sane, you know? Um, and so like, I think about all of those things, you know, and have thought about those things to like, to get to who I am on stage now mixed with all the people that I mentioned, you know, and the bands that I mentioned that I draw influence from. And so, you know, but the same thing can be said about anything you do in your life or I do in my life. It's all a collection of influences from everything else that you've, you know, and ex- all those experiences that you've taken in in your life, they contribute to like who you are as a person. All of that same stuff contributes to who I am, like on the stage. It's just about being loose, being yourself, you know, and, uh, you know, have an equal amount of, you know, aggression, aggression in one hand, love in the other. You know what I mean? And just like being yourself. And that's like really what I try to do now is just be my authentic self, man, you know, because like, too many times I've worked a fucking job, man, where I couldn't be my authentic self. You know, I'm having to be somebody else and <laughs> fucking tired of being somebody else, man. I just want to be me, you know, I just want to be me and, and that's it, you know? And so like, I think as long as everybody on stage, you know, you're doing that and you're being respectful, obviously, you know, you're thinking about being respectful and not being an idiot, you know, um, you know, it'll, it'll work out, you know, but like, you know, you got to be yourself. That's like the number one thing. And, and it's, man, it's only until this past tour, dude, that I've like come into my own on some things, you know, like, I mean, it's just the truth. Like, you know, I usually hug my mic stand, 
you know a lot of the time i'm hugging my mic stand because i can't fucking feel my feet i'm so nervous you know i'm like petrified you know um but it it's it's like you know um on this past tour i know this is like aside from the point kind of but you know on this on this uh past tour i got to do like um i got to do some guest vocals during one of my favorite hardcore bands terror um oh, wow. they're one of the bands that got me into like hardcore uh and Incredible like band. i've always loved yeah i've always loved them uh and scott vogel is like a huge influence like as far as like just like positivity and like his like stage banter like everything is just like so amazing top tier and um seeing him every night really inspired me like truly inspired me and uh, i got to do um corpse grinders part in uh can't help but hate um on a bunch of shows and uh that was the first time that i've gone out and kind of done vocals on the stage with no mic stand like normally i have my mic stand you know but i didn't have it so it like dude it was like it was like a video game and I unlocked a new level. <laughs> I literally unlocked a new fucking level because the rest of the fucking, the rest of the tour, I was like 50, 50 with my mic stand and just walking around the fucking stage. And then I realized, Holy shit. Like I stay much cooler when I move around on stage than when I just stay in the same spot. How fucked up and weird is that? <laughs> um, but like, you know, like that's like, that's like coming into my own, you know, and trying to like really have fun and loosen up and not be so worried and so anxious on stage. And, you know, it's the same with Chris and Mike and Sam, like they're moving around now constantly. They got wireless systems so they can do that now. <laughs> but like, um, you know, it's all about coming into yourself, you know what I mean? Um, and just like being, being like being you and like unapologetic, just like being you on stage and being you when you're doing your vocals and stuff like that. And so, you know, that's really like what I've focused on for the longest fucking time, man, is just trying to do that, you know, not try to be like somebody else, you know, but like look at what somebody else does and be like, what makes them so confident that they can move around like that and mm -hmm. do that and stuff. Cause like when you're feeling a lot of anxiety, you get tired way faster. Like, if you're full of adrenaline and you're ready to go and stuff like you can move forever. It feels like, but the second you start worrying and you start letting that anxiety in, it's hard to function. Yeah. You know it's I mean? it your blood pressure, like all sorts of stuff. And you're just like, you're just like glued to the stage or glued to your seat, you know? And so like, I've just, you know, for, for a while now, I've just been trying to like unlock that level where I can fucking get into it a little bit more and not be so worried and, so stuck to my spot or so you know so like reliant on my mic stand and stuff like that and so like you know it's 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 all about you know it all ties back into just being yourself you know with your vocals and with you so i hope you know you you know hope you do that yeah i, yeah, I think it's you did the right thing though i think like the whole terror situation like you know when you, you're forced to not have your mic stand like i think with any sort of cases of anxiety when you're like nervous to do something and you're forced to you know conquer your fears i think that is when you like i said you level up you get a new perk it's like yeah 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 it's yeah, the it's real shit to it. too it's the real shit too i mean like i don't know i i don't i don't really get into the whole like because you know i mean I deal with a lot of anxiety and stuff, you know, um, and I, I am absolutely nobody to tell anybody else, you know, how to deal with what they got going on. Um, all you could do is like share your experience, you know? Um, and for me, I'm the type of person like, you know, that exposure really helps me. You know, it was like that when I, 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 w I went to college, like um, I'm still in college technically uh, just, haven't been able to finish this very last class um because of touring so much but um you know i went to i started going to school in 2017 so like uh you know at a at a at an older age you know i was in class with like kids you know and like you know i felt so much anxiety having to get up and speak and stuff in front of like kids you know fucking zoomers you know, I'm like, fuck, man, these kids probably think I'm a fucking giant idiot, you know, um, but like 
getting put in front of it, I realized like I could do it more, you know, I could do it. I could do more of it. I could do better. I, you know, it forced me to like get over my anxiety. You know, I had no choice at that point. <laughs> I mean, I was literally, I paid for the fucking classes. I, <laughs> I had no choice. I had to get the fuck up there and there is no, I couldn't do it. You know, it was, this is it. It forced me to. And I think that was probably the first awakening for me, you know, where I had leveled up the first time, you know, I leveled up the first time in school and I was like, okay, I can do this. Cause I mean, man, I was sweating bullets beforehand. I was so nervous about getting up. I'd play shows, you know, but like, couldn't, couldn't get up in front of a class and talk, you know, cause I just felt like, I don't know how it was different, but it was. <laughs> yeah. Presentation. And, uh, so much. <laughs> yeah. So it, it helped me like, it helped me level up that way. And then on stage, you know, little things happen and I start talking more. Cause dude, when frozen soul started, I didn't fucking talk to anybody on stage. I didn't say anything. Like it was literally like, I'm just going to be like fucking mean death metal. And then I realized like, first of all, that's not me. I'm a fucking dork. So I got to be a dork. I got to, I got to talk like, that's just me. Like I can't get away from that. Um, but I realized like all of that, like silent, but deadly shit was just my anxiety seeping through my skin, you know, keeping me from like having fun, you know? And so I started letting that up, you know, level up, level up, level up. And then this tour, it's like, I just hit the no, threshold. Time prestige now. <laughs> yeah. Like now's where I just like, I got on stage with fucking Scott Bolt. Okay. I'm leveled. <laughs> I'm up there. Now we can work on the end game. <laughs> you no, know? I super awesome too, uh, man. Yeah, it was, it was fucking fun, man. It was awesome. But you know, yeah, it's, uh, it was, it was great, man. But yeah, being yourself and stuff, it, it's all cool to like go through your, you know, influences and stuff, but you know, and to pay like love to that and everything, but like, just get up there. You love fucking death metal. You love hardcore. You do that. That's it. Just be you and do that. You know, no, much respect to that. Oh, yeah. Honestly, um, I wanted to ask about as well um, on the new album. It's like evident that there's like a lot of 80s horror influence. I don't know if that was intentional, but like, you know, there's like synths in there as well. Like, you know, sort of like soundtracks that remind me of stuff like, I don't know, Evil Dead and Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff. And even like the Morbid Effigy video, like, you know, is it just reminds me of that style, like something that we haven't seen for quite a while. You know, a lot of bands do the, you know, the the gent in a warehouse thing, and which is cool. Mm -hmm. But like, I think you guys brought like a level of authenticity back to that. Um, was that something that you you guys like horror fans? Is that something what what brought into it, or is it just something that you know musically came to you? Yeah, I mean, like we're we all love horror movies. We're also a huge fan of like synthwave and like uh, you know um, dark wave and you know all that stuff, power pop, all that all that stuff that's out there floating around. Like we're fans of it, whether it's like synth wave like perturbator magic sword or like you know drab majesty and choir boy and, you know uh twin tribes and stuff like that um like we like a lot of that stuff and i'm a huge fan of john carpenter um yeah, huge fan of the thing um it's one of my all-time favorite movies top three uh you know and uh yeah i mean there's two songs on the record that are all about the thing uh it's frozen soul and assimilator um and it's technically one song it's just split up on the record uh, but it's one song and it's frozen soul the assimilator um and it's naming the thing frozen frozen soul so like it's like uh you know with doing stuff like that and the fact that all of our music and stuff has since even in the even on the other record you know uh our music videos all have this like killer called the wraith of death and it like it's all like you know 80s you know 90s horror early 90s late 80s early 90s horror movie like inspired and stuff like that uh, you know i mean it's it's huge we're we're big fans so you know um especially like you know for me uh aside from like horror movies i'm like a big sci-fi guy too i love sci-fi i love the aliens movies oh, predator movie favorite. Yeah, You know, I love Lord of the Rings. I love like, you know, Game of Thrones. I love like, you know, I played EverQuest, you know, a lot. 
uh, back in the day, which is an MMO. Like, and I played World of Warcraft and Diablo. You know, gaming and movies and stuff is like is a part of like literally everyone in this band's life. You know, and it's like, you know, it kind of goes back to the vocal stuff. Like, it's like, man, you you have got to try to be yourself. You know, you've got to be yourself, and you've got to like, you've got to put you into anything that you do you know and um you know if there's if there's one thing that i've learned in doing this for so many years you know it's just like just be you be you and put you into it a hundred percent and that's just what we've done so it made it, it was no exception when writing the new record it, you know the only exception to this record is is we have to do it better you know like we have to put more of ourselves into it you know and uh yeah, I mean, you can hear it all over the place. The synth, you know, we're super lucky with that synth too, because we, our friend James, you know, in in uh in the the synthwave band, uh, Ghost, he he's from Texas. He lives like in East Texas, so I've known him forever, and like we've played, our bands have played shows together, like hardcore shows and stuff, you know, since like before two thousand, I don't know, like two thousand ten. 2009 or something like that it's a long ass time you know so um you know linking up with him was just perfect you know and then we have our friend eric from play gears um he did a lot of the synths on um crypt of ice he did uh he did the arsenal sample and then the uh the godzilla style sample destruction sample before atomic winter and he did some others too that we ended up not going with but like you know, it's like, we just, we got to do stuff like that, man, because like that stuff is a huge influence on our lives. And I love telling a story, you know, mm -hmm. I love watching stories. I love reading stories. I love playing stories. You know what I mean? So it's like, we had, we all do. So we had to put that in the record. And, you know, I think like if you get the vinyl and you spin that shit front to back, you'll see it because like the way the songs go into each other, I honestly feel bad for anybody who listens to that on streaming because you do not get the same feel like it was not meant to be heard streaming on fucking Spotify. It was meant for you to put the record in a record player and play it front to back. And when you do that, you'll see a whole new beast of a record because the way the synths usher in all the songs, it's seamless. It's seamless. Like yeah, they the go vinyl. into each other. <laughs> they go into each other. Like the way assimilator goes into best serve cold is the best fucking thing we've ever is one of the best thing transitions we've ever done. You know, um, like when the way death or glory or, or death and glory ends and goes straight into the sample for morbid effigy, you can't hear that. Like you just can't do that with streaming. Like, like we wrote it to be like a big, kind of like a big movie score. You know, um, so, you know, and the, even the way Annihilation goes into Glacial Domination, like you kind of can hear it in the music video, uh, but you can't hear it when you listen to it on streaming, you know, because uh, they're not one song because really Annihilation. I've listened to that song so much because I love it. <laughs> so so we had to separate it on the record. But like, yeah, man, like um, like the, the synths and stuff like. It's it's exactly what you think it is, you know. It's all based on the movies that we love, whether it's you know the fucking never ending story or it's Nightmare on Elm Street and the thing, you know. It's like it's like those kind of adventures, you know, and stuff like that. Whether they're like for horror or fantasy or sci fi or action, like it it all drives us. And so like we have the different emotions set up through the record to kind of help bring in the the next song stuff you know and like really help with that experience so glad you noticed that you know you, that you like you all like this stuff with the synth because yeah uh, we're yeah, pretty nerdy bad. ourselves to be fair like we love it is horror and love movies and love games and stuff so like oh, yeah. those kind of details we do love <laughs> yeah oh like, yeah me me and brad are like pretty big like i'm getting like some i'm getting a balrog tattoo, tattooed on my chest eventually oh fuck yeah so like a massive like mate i've got so many ideas for it but like um yeah like me and brad both love all that fantasy and, and sci-fi like that's I think cool it's man. because I, I was always a nerd and like me and brad didn't know each other when we were younger but like i think we've liked all the same stuff 
Yeah. But I was all just like a bit of a bit of a nerd and just well, a bit of a shut in. And that was just like massive escapism for me. Like I used to just oh, yeah. always just like just watch them and just be glued to it. Um, oh yeah. So like that that stuff I always whenever I hear it, I really appreciate it because like it reminds me of all the old horror movies I would watch like late at night. Yeah. And, like be shitting myself over all like, <laughs> yeah. Or like you know, like never like never ending story when like uh you know like just hearing st- Oh, that old like sim sound and just sims in general just it's like even yeah. if it doesn't sound like that it just brings me back to something like that from my like, childhood yeah 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 man i mean it's that kind of stuff that makes you you know i mean oh yeah so yeah fuck yeah yeah like, i think as well on the point of that as well like you know you saying that you wanting to become like your more authentic self like instead of being like the you know kind of quiet death metal guy on stage i think that like nerdy self probably resonates more with like a lot of the fans as well because like as much as people in the metal community might want to think that oh yeah i'm that guy just the edgy guy in the edge of the bar doesn't say anything just gives the you know a smoldering look like that's not us at all like we're all pretty nerd and we're all into most of the same things i'd say like we like we like comic books and we like superheroes and we like 80s horror so i think like it's great that you're doing that i think like people will definitely resonate more with that for sure yeah, for sure. Hey. Yeah, definitely. I definitely relate on the, the game and stuff as well. Because I've been like, I've got, I, I, I don't really talk about it on the podcast a lot, but I've got a concept album that I've been trying to write that's based off a God of War map. And it's just a singular God of War map. <laughs> really? I remember playing it and I was there, like it popped into my head. I was like, I've got an idea. <laughs> and then <laughs> it's just been in there like until I can get it out. And I'm like, I've been working on it, but I'm like, just, you know, until something's a real thing, you just, it won't stop like clattering around in your head. Yeah. I've just been sat there being like, this is going to be the best. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> done. Fuck yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to ask as well, like where, where did the, the idea for like the coldness and the iciness and like, you know, the kind of aesthetics of frozen soul, um, where did that come from? I mean, we just kind of fell into, doing all the uh aesthetic stuff uh but in general man like um you know in the band like you know we deal with a lot of like as individuals like you know and it's the same with almost everyone on the face of this planet like we deal with a lot of like stress and you know and depression and you know figuring stuff out um internally and it's just it just makes sense man life is can be fucking cold man and you know life people um in general everything can be cold and so you know i mean it just it just made sense you know frozen soul made sense as a name you know and uh and it's not a depressing thing it's a it's a it's a how do we overcome this thing you know like how do we like keep pushing forward, you know, and and you know, well, this is how we do it, you know, and so you know it's a lot of it's 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 a lot of stuff that was just natural, you know, real natural. Let me, I need to plug my laptop in really quick, yeah, okay, because yeah, no, it's we... gonna die. I thought a full charge would get me through this, but <laughs> guess not. I've absolutely killed my uh my 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 laptop charger from having it charged all, right. all the time from like with the podcast and everything like that. So, all right, I'm back. There we go. Awesome, man. So we got we do have one more question for you. Um, yeah. So, if it was the zombie apocalypse and yeah. you were just surrounded by your band members, who would you be most reliant on, and who would you be least reliant on? <laughs> this is the one. This is the one we're always Fuck. like. This is going to cause arguments in the practice. Yeah. People, <laughs> people, people, people even like savage out the band mates. All this, but oh, I don't know. But I guess everyone would be reliable. <laughs> um, uh, man. Um, hmm.
Okay. Most reliant. Matt. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you. Okay, okay, okay. It got it went awkwardly like no, I hear some background noise, but it went <laughs> silent. No background noise. I was like, wait a minute. It's because like so, we just like focus in when we've got our headphones in, so we just like lock in for some reason. <laughs> so I'd say most reliant would probably be Matt. Mm. Um, so we have a term for Matt in our band. Uh we call him Rathew. And uh we also call him our golden retriever. It no matter what, Matt's there for you. You, he's, a good you, boy. you he's he is he is the best boy. He's the best dude, the <laughs> best friend I could ever ask for. You know, he he man, when I got into a wreck when we were like filming Wrecking Ball, uh the the live stream from like 2020, um, I fucking like totaled my car, essentially. And it was in the shop for like a month and a half getting constant work done. He literally picked me up every day to like go to the gym with me and to like do all sorts of stuff. Like, and this was like, you know, in the, in the pandemic, like he was like, when, when I needed to go anywhere, he was there, you know? Um, but it's the same with on the road. Like Matt's there for anybody who needs, him. you need something from Matt. He will drop what he's doing and he'll take care of it, you know? And like, that's that's you know that's 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 what you need when you're in a zombie apocalypse you know he's the guy you need to make a supply run that he can go do it he needs a tiny guy he can get through places that other people can't get through you know he can probably get around quieter um you know me uh me michael and chris are all bigger guys um so like sometimes as a big dude it's hard to get around and not make a lot of noise so you know it's Matt. Matt's Matt's the Matt's the go to guy. Um, and That's I'd awesome say man. for for a zombie apocalypse, the person I'd probably like not rely on for stuff like that would be Sam. Um, mainly just because like Sam has like Sam has like her strengths, which are like needed at the camp. You know, like getting shit done and organizing things. And like, she's like meticulous with that stuff. She runs a tattoo shop. So like, I wouldn't need to like, if I was trying to like rely on somebody to get something or do something, I would send Matt, you know what I mean? But Sam would be like handling behind the scenes stuff, taking care of business and making sure everyone else is good. You know what I mean? So I would be, I would be more leaning towards Matt to go take care of shit and fucking run the run the run the fucking grocery store, the rundown zombie infested grocery stores and stuff. That would be Matt would do that shit in a heartbeat. So yeah, I respect. You got like a full a full schematic plan. Oh yeah, plans. I love it. <laughs> I, I I I could think about that shit all day. Um, <laughs> you know, and then oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> the first time we asked that. I remember I went. I was like in that band practice the day after, like no, the day after the episode dropped, and like I remember walking in and I could feel the energy different. And like, <laughs> I was there, like I was like walking in. I was like, "Yeah, guys," and he's there. Like they're like, "Right, so who is it?" And I'm like, "What are you? With? Who's most and who's least?" And I, was, I was like, there you go. "Why are you putting me on the spot like this?" It was just a question on the podcast. We went, "We want to know who's who's the most and who's the least." I was like, well, it's Danny the most. <laughs> I've already fought it through. <laughs> yeah. I am on. But yeah, honestly, thank you so much for coming on. It's been uh, mad yeah, having man. you. Like, um, we're, sure. we're massive fans of you guys, and we're Thanks, super dude. stoked to see you at Bloodstock this year. On the first day as well, like, you know, probably the first band that we're going to be raging, so we'll rage the hardest for you guys. I'm running yeah. to the tent. I'm running, yeah, to, running the tent. to the tent. First, first yeah, one. I'm stoked because I heard that, um, like, Thursday, like, there's not, like, a lot of bands playing or something like that so i can't remember i i think for bloodstock they said like it's almost like a pre-show or something kind of thing that we're playing i don't know but a bunch of people told uh told me that it's like one of the most insane days because everyone's already there 
Yeah, there's oh, no yeah, bands like, clashing or anything. So like, like, it's, there's no there clashing. So they're like, it's gonna be fucking crazy. It always is, and I'm I'm fucking stoked. I can't wait. I mean, I'm stoked to just play in general. I <laughs> never thought I'd get to do that. Oh yeah, everyone's like super fresh on that Thursday too. Like it's, oh, yeah. it's like everyone just goes nuts. Um, it's normally about like the Sunday. I know it's the tr- st- strategically planned like a little bit more chill bands towards the end of the festival. <laughs> yeah. Because they're Probably. like, everyone's going to be fucked. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, like, I, I, I'm I, honestly going to run into that tent, man. I, I oh, honestly yeah. can't wait. I'm stoked. Make sure uh, make sure we can uh, message me or something. Let's link up and stuff that day. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll buy you a beer for sure. Yeah, because I think the next day, I'm pretty positive, like, we leave that next day or we leave that night. Um, Like, I don't think we're staying beyond that day as much as i fucking wish we could uh but i know we have like a lot of festivals and a lot of ground to cover in between the festivals and we're doing like um we're doing uh yeah we're doing a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of club shows and stuff in between so yeah we'll right. definitely go for a bit and uh well we'll just have one if we don't want to be yeah 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 oh, oh, dude, <laughs> totally down to get a beer yeah 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 just not gonna get drunk <laughs> yes what, uh, one place I always recommend as well, if you ever do like like any other tours, uh, I always recommend Boom as a venue. Which is okay. Like old DIY punk venue in Leeds. Oh, yeah. It's one of the best like venues in Leeds. I've got I've seen so many bands there, so oh, I always yeah. recommend to every band I interview. If you ever get the chance, play a Boom because they're everyone there, lovely. It's great. Oh, that's awesome! Fuck yeah! Hell yeah! That'd be great. I'm not also, sure. They're, they're We're playing crazy. a whole bunch of different places out there, so I don't know. But I know, like, I know I I want to say we're with Converge. Oh, sweet. Ooh. Yeah, sweet. I, I want to say we're with Converge in the days we're in the UK. Some of the days, like three or four. So uh, I know they'll be probably like slightly bigger places. But uh, man, I would fucking love to play like a fucking small punk hardcore venue out there oh, man. and it's, see what it's, it's like. It's just a sweat. It's like a sweat box in the <laughs> But like, it's, so, oh, yeah. it's such a great venue, man. Honestly, oh, every, yeah. every band that I interview, I'm like, you've got to do a show there because it, oh, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. Every stage is a fucking sweat box that I step on. It doesn't <laughs> matter if the room is a 12 by 12 or it's like a 4,000 cap room. I'm sweating my fucking ass off on stage. <laughs> insane but yeah well i appreciate it guys thanks yeah, for thank having you. me it's been great talking to you like yeah we said, for sure been massive fans so we're really looking forward to this one so yeah awesome, it's been man. great man oh yeah keep in touch guys yeah Definitely, for man. sure man and uh all the best yeah, take care oh, yeah man peace